Let's say it's good to be coming your way today. We appreciate uh, you watching. It's always good to be able to come and I always enjoy these uh, programs that we have. We really enjoy it. We appreciate you watching. Uh, I want to say I appreciate all the people that came to our singing last Sunday night. We had a wonderful singing. It was really good. And I appreciate everybody coming. Just a great singing. Had great we had a dinner after the singing. It was really good. I uh, want to give you an invitation to come be with us at Lacey's Chapel. You go to Henry Crossing. Go west on 40. Like you're going to Scottsboro. Church will be three miles on your left from Henry Crossing. I would love to have you. We we'll give you an invitation to come be with us. We've got a great church. and God sent some wonderful people there. They're really good people. And... Uh, you know, it's just a good church. So, if you got your Bible today, you want to read, uh, we looked at, we're still talking about love. We looked at uh, where it says, love beareth all things. And we talked about Jesus last week, some of the things that, that he bore because he loved us. And uh, this week, I want to look at Apostle Paul. And some of the things that he bore because he loved God. And I, I want to point out some things here that God showed me that uh, I believe would be a, a really encouragement to you. I believe you'd be a blessing to you if you're watching. And uh, maybe you're going through something that you may not understand. You may be going through a difficult time. Uh, today, what God showed me will help you. It, it will really help you. Um, Acts chapter 9, talking about Saul, said, Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, talking about people that believed in Jesus, whether they were men or women, he may bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So, and uh, verse 3 said, As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Suddenly the light shined round about him, a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thy me? And I've said before, Saul wasn't persecuting Jesus himself, but he was persecuting the church. And Jesus said, Why persecuteth thy me? Jesus, in other words, was saying, when you mistreat a Christian, you mistreat me. When you bless a Christian, you bless me. Matthew 25 talks about uh, people standing before uh, Jesus. and He said, when I was hungry, you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was in prison, you visited me. They said, Lord, when we ever see you in prison or hungry or naked? And he said, when you done it to the least of these, my brethren, you done it unto me. So Jesus is saying when you bless the least of the body of Christ, you bless Jesus. He told Saul, when you mistreat the body of Christ, you're mistreating me because he identifies with us. Verse 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? Saul was religious, but he didn't know Jesus. He said, Who art thou? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. Is it hard for thee to kick again the pricks? In other words, Jesus was telling Saul, you're not going to win. You're not going to fight again God and be victorious. You'll never win that battle. Verse 5, he trembling and stunned. He said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said, Arise, go to the city, and it shall be told thou what thou must do. Now verse 11, I'm going to show you some stuff here. And the Lord said, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Taurus. Now this is what God is telling Ananias. He's a Christian. He's a believer in Damascus. And this is what God tells Ananias. He said, go to the street which is called Straight. Name of the street was Straight. Straight Street. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Taurus. For behold, he prayeth. In other words, uh, the great persecutor is calling upon God. It's what Jesus tells Ananias. 
and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he may receive his sight. And Ananias, of course, I mean, Paul was having men and women killed, but God saved him. God forgave him. He's praying. God has already given him a vision. Then I said, I've heard by, by many of this man how much evil he's done to the saints at Jerusalem. He has, he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Now listen to what Jesus tells Ananias about Paul. I mean, he's Saul, but God changes his name to Paul. Listen to what he says about him. Go thy way. He is a chosen vessel unto me. Man, this is good. I mean, this guy had been mistreating people, having men and women put in prison. Uh, he had them put to death. Uh, he would later say, I wasted the church of God. In other words, I had them put to death. He said, go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now listen to, listen to this verse right here. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. You know, we talked about last week about Isaiah 53, where Isaiah prophesied 700 years before Jesus how he would be despised and rejected, a man of sorrows. How, you know, the difficulty and the I mean, God said that 700 years before Jesus was ever born, but he was telling what the Messiah would go through. He, he's God's son. He's without sin. He's the perfect son of God. But he's going to go through some stuff. Well, God tells Ananias, said, go thy way, talking about Saul, or later to be called Paul. He's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. In other words, he's going to preach Jesus. He's going to declare that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, that whoever believes on him, you know, would not perish but have eternal life. Uh, Paul said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He later wrote that in Romans chapter 10. So, Paul is going to preach Jesus, but he's going to, God said, man, he's chosen vessel. But it says in verse 16, I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And, and what I want to point out here is, in verse 15, God is telling, he's a chosen vessel. He's going to stand before kings and declare my name before the uh the children of Israel to declare my name before the Gentiles and declare my name. He's a chosen vessel. But God also said one other thing. He said, I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. I mean, God not only said he'll stand before Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel and declare my name, uh, but he, he's going to go through some stuff. And God, here's what God said. I'm going to show him some of the stuff he's going to go through. Which he did. Which he did. We turn to Acts chapter 26. Let's look at Acts chapter 26. See, this is good stuff right here. Acts chapter 26. Because you may be watching, and you may be a Christian serving God, and you don't, you know, maybe you don't understand why you're going through some of the stuff you're going through. Maybe, you know, you're asking, is it some sin I've done? Or, I mean, why? Why would God allow me to go through some of this stuff? Well, we'll fix and look at that in just a minute. But when Jesus saved Paul, he told him, he said, you're going to, I told him, I'm going to show him uh, the great things he's going to suffer for my name's sake. I'm going to show him what a, a great calling he has on his life. What a great calling he has on his life. But also, uh, he's going to go through some stuff. I know one time I was watching him interview Billy Graham. And I couldn't agree more with what Billy Graham said. I agreed 
this guy asked Billy Graham, he said, what's the one thing, what's the one thing that we have failed to tell new converts when they get saved? What's the one thing that we should have told them that we haven't told them? And Billy Graham said, we should tell them that, you know, they're going to go through some stuff. Yes, they're going to live forever in heaven. They're going to have eternity in a new body, uh, total joy, total peace. I mean, they've got eternity with God with no problems, with peace and joy. And I mean, heaven is such a wonderful, great place that God has prepared for us for all eternity. But while we're on this earth, Christians do go through things. Does it mean they sin? Does it mean that God doesn't love them? It doesn't mean that uh, they've done something wrong? God told Paul he just got saved. A man had just got saved. He hadn't done anything at this point. And Jesus said, I, I'm, he's a chosen vessel. He's going to stand before kings. He'll stand before Gentiles. He'll stand before the children of Israel. I mean, God was telling what a great ministry he had. But at the same time that God was telling Paul what a great ministry he was going to have, he said, I'm going to show him what he's going to go through. I'm going to show him uh, how much he'll suffer for my name's sake. And that's what, when the guy asked Billy Graham, what's the one thing that we haven't told Christians? What's the one thing we haven't told them? He said, they'll, they'll go through things. We live in a sin-cursed world. And nobody lives this life without going through things. Nobody does. Nobody does. And I guess one of the great things that I learned when I started pastoring church, and that's been right at 30 years ago. And, you know, I thought, man, me and my family, we got a lot of problems. <laughs> but when I started pastoring, I found out every family has problems. Every family has problems. We live in a sin-cursed world. And there, there is some suffering in this world. But I'm telling you, if you'll, you just stay with God, it's going to be worth. Paul said our light affliction is but for a moment. This guy that the Bible talks about, some of the things he suffered, he said it's only temporary. And I was talking to uh, Wendell Bradshaw and, Last night was at church. We had a singing. had a wonderful singing. But I told Wendell, we're sitting there, and they were singing about heaven. And I said, Wendell, I said, and I was, and I was telling my cousin John, too. We, we, we was, I said, problems are temporary. Problems are temporary. When we get to heaven, they're no more. That's it. They're, they're, problems are a temporary thing. Suffering is a temporary thing. When you get to heaven... The suffering and the problems, they're gone. Problems are a temporary thing. They're just for uh, a few years, a few days. And when, when God calls you home, that's it. There's no more problems. But let's look at Paul just for a minute. He, he's standing before King Agrippa. And I, and I want to read this because this is good. He's standing before King Agrippa. He said, he's telling about his conversion. He heard a voice that Saul, Saul, why persecuteth me? It's hard for thee to keep again the pricks. He's telling this to Ananias. It's in Acts 26 and 15. And, and I said, who art thou? And he said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecuted. Now listen to what Jesus, Paul tells Ananias what Jesus told him. Acts 26 and 16. He said, rise, stand upon thy feet. I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister, a witness both of these things that thou hast seen and of those things which I will appear unto thee. Jesus, now listen to what Jesus told Paul. I will make thee a minister and a witness to both of these things which thou hast seen. You're going to testify about what, what you've seen and of the things in which I will appear unto thee. Jesus told Paul, you're going to testify about what you've seen. Well, he was doing that then with the Gribble, giving his testimony. But he said, you'll also testify things that 
I'll, I'm going to appear to you and tell you. You know, it's, in other words, Jesus told Paul, I'm going, I'm going to uh, appear to you. I'm going to show you some things. You're fixing to learn some things. He says, look what he says. Thou be a witness both of the things that I have seen and the things in which I will appear unto thee. Jesus was telling Paul, I got some things I want to teach you. I got some things I want to show you. I have some things I want to teach you. Well, you think about what Jesus said. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Jesus, listen to what Jesus said. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Jesus said, I speak to my sheep. Well, Jesus talked about the Holy Ghost, said when the Comforter is come, he will teach you all things. There's a lot of things in our life that we don't understand. And there's a lot of things in our life that God, through the Holy Ghost, he teaches us, he shows us. Jesus said when the Comforter is come, he shall teach you all things. So there's a lot of things that we have to be taught. And... uh, that's what Jesus told Paul. You're going to testify about what you've seen, and you're also going to testify about the things I'm going to appear to you and show you. So that, I mean, this is good. I mean, this is good. God is saying for each of us, there's things that I want to teach you. There's things that I want to show you. That's why Jesus, talking about the Holy Ghost, when the Comforter has come, he shall teach you all things. Jesus said one of the ministries of the Holy Ghost is he's a teacher. Who does he teach? He teaches God's children. But he said, Arise, stand to thy feet, to make thee a minister and a witness both the things of these things in which I will appear to thee, delivering thee from the people. So Jesus told Paul, man, see, this is such good stuff right here. Jesus told Paul, you're, one more last time, let me say this, you're going to a Witness, you're going to witness or testify about the things you've already seen, but you're also going to be a witness about the things that God's going to teach you in the future. He said, and and I love that. And of the things which I will appear unto thee. At that time when Jesus told that to Paul, he hadn't appeared unto him. About the future things, he had, he had appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thy me? But Jesus told Paul, there's more for you to learn. There's more coming. And that's one of the reasons that Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. Said when the Comforter has come, he'll teach you all things. He is the teacher. He is the teacher. Jesus also said he'll bring to your remembrance the things I've said unto you. Jesus said he'll help your memory. You know, one time Jesus said, when you stand before kings, you know, don't uh, think about what you'll say. He said the Holy Ghost will give you what to say in that very hour. So not the Holy Ghost teaches you, not only teaches you, he helps your memory. Not only does he help your memory, but Jesus said when you stand before men, he'll teach you what to say. He'll tell you what to say. It's, man, this is good right here. So Jesus was telling Paul, yeah, you're an educated man. You're, you know, you're, you're a Pharisee. You, you've learned the law. But Jesus said there's a lot I've got to teach you, Paul. And that's so true with me and you. That's so true with me and you. When we get saved, there's so much that God wants to teach us. I've always thought of the verse. I've always think of the verse where God says, My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. God says, Why my people get in trouble is because of a lack of knowledge. They don't have the knowledge of God. Well, one of the gifts of the Spirit, one of the that God gives us this knowledge. He gives us wisdom. He gives us knowledge. He says, Thy, verse 17, He said, Delivering thee from the people. So God was telling Paul, He's talking about the future here. He said, I'm going to deliver you from the people. Look what He says. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. So, Jesus told Paul, I'm going to send you to the Gentiles. I'm going to send you to the people. 
but I'm going to deliver it. In other words, why did you, why did you tell him, Paul, I'm going to protect you. you? Yeah, you're going to suffer. You're going to go through some stuff. But they're not going to kill you till it's time for you to come home. I'm going to protect you. He said, verse 17, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Look at verse 18. I mean, well, let's say one more sentence about verse 17. Jesus is telling Paul, I'm going to send you out. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to send you out, but I'm also going to protect you. Man, I, this is so good. I mean, we see that God is telling Paul. He hadn't, Paul hadn't even started. You know, a lot of people think that when Paul got saved, that he started right then on his missionary journeys. Well, the notes in my Bible, yeah, let me say again, the notes in my Bible says from the time that Paul got saved on the Damascus Road, it was 10 years before God sent him on the first missionary journey. That's what the notes in my Bible say. Ten years. Why? God had to teach him. God had to teach him. You may be watching. You, Man, I want God to use me and I'm ready to pastor a church and I'm ready to run revivals. God's got to teach you first. You have to spend time in the Word of God. And you also need to sit under a preacher. You need to sit under someone that can teach you the Word of God. You know, the Bible said God gives us pastors and teachers for our edification, for the building up of the saints. Uh, if someone has a calling on their life, they need to sit under somebody that can teach them the Word of God. You need to be taught yourself. You can't teach what you don't know. You need to sit under a teacher. You need to sit under a godly preacher. A lot of preachers start out and you know, they've never sat under no preacher and they don't lie slow. They really don't. Verse 17, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles and to whom I'll send thee. This sentence right here is really good because God tells Paul, I'm going to deliver you. Now listen to what Jesus said here. I'm going to deliver you from the people that I send you to. In other words, Jesus is telling Paul, you're going to go some places that I'm going to send you that they're not going to receive you. But I'm going to keep you. I'm going to uh, keep you. I'm going to protect your life. Jesus did not, this is so important to know, Jesus did not tell Paul, everywhere you go, they're going to receive you. He never told him that. He said in verse 17, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles to whom now I send thee. God, in one sentence, said, I'm going to send you. And in the same sentence, he said, I'll deliver you from them. Well, to be delivered from people is talking about God keeping you, you know, keeping you alive. God's protecting you. The same people that God sent Paul to is the same people that God protected Paul from. Did, did Paul, was Paul ever whipped? Yes. Was he ever beat? Yes. He went through some tough stuff. But God saved his life. God saved his life. And when it was time for Paul to, to, for his life to end, God told him it was time. I mean, this is wonderful stuff right here. We see that God had to teach Paul, that God had to send Paul, and God had to protect Paul. Now you think about what I've just said to you. God had to teach Paul. First he saved him. Then he taught him. Then he sent him. Then he protected him. So we see that God was in Paul's life. Every step of it. God saved him. He taught him. You know the Bible says that uh, Paul was in the Arabian desert for two years. And God was teaching him. God just didn't save him and said, now go preach. That's, Paul did not go into his first missionary journey under 10 years after he was saved. That's amazing. But God was preparing him. God had a great, great work for Moses. But he prepared him for 40 years. <laughs> he didn't even, he, he prepared him for 40 years before he started what God had him to do. Moses, 
did not deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt till he was 80. He prepared him for 40 years. He was in a palace for 40 years. He was prepared for 40 years. Then he was a leader for 40 years. God prepares his people. God saved Paul. He taught Paul. That's why we have the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost has come, he'll teach you all things. You say, well, I got a good preacher that teaches me. Well, he's doing it through the Spirit. He's doing it. He has the gift of teaching or the gift of preaching. He has, he has one of the gifts operating in his life if he's helping you. That's how God teaches us a lot through other people. He teaches us when we study his word. But we will never get anything out of the word of God if the spirit of God don't reveal it to us when we study it. So we see right here, God saved Paul. God taught Paul. God sent Paul. And God protected Paul. I mean, this, this is wonderful stuff. I mean, this is, but what is true to Paul and I've showed you a Bible verse for every one of those. God saved Paul. God taught Paul. God sent Paul. And he protected him. And I could put the very last one, didn't he bring him home? Is that, is that not true with me and you? God saves us. He teaches us. He sends us. He protects us. And when it's time, he's going to bring us home. This, man, this is good stuff right here. We see five things in Paul's life that God did for him. He saved him. He taught him. He sent him. He protected him. And he brought him home. Listen, now listen to what I'm going to say to you. God told Paul this when he saved him. He told Paul, I'm going to teach you. I, I'm going to appear to you. I, I got some things I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you. He told Paul, I'll protect you from the people I send you to. That means everywhere he was sent didn't receive him. See, this is good. The important thing is about being obedient to God. And my time has run up. I've enjoyed this. Remember this. God saves you. He teaches you. He protects you. And when it's time, he brings you home. To so this time next week, I pray you'll have a great week. If you get a chance Sunday, come be with us at Lacey Chapel. We'd love to have you. Goodbye.